Thank you for purchasing the Oz Optics Fiber Length Meter. This is a step-by-step -step guide that complements the instruction manual provided with a fiber length meter. We begin at the front panel of this two-port unit. Here, we have the power switch, the send and receive ports, and the touchscreen display. Let's take a look at the back. Here, we have the USB port and the power port. We can plug the power cable in that was included with the system into this back, like so. Pick it up, turn it around, and turn the power on. The unit boots up, performs some diagnostics and an internal systems check. Once this screen is displayed, the fiber length meter is ready to use. Let's make a basic length measurement. We have a patch cord with FC-APC connectors on both ends. We plug one end into the send port and the other end into the receive port. Tighten up the FC nuts and push the run, which is the second button along the bottom row. As you can see, the measured length is just over one meter long. We can confirm this measurement by using a good old-fashioned ruler. I'll just refresh the length measurement like this and unplug the patch cord. Laying the fiber flat across the desk, placing it beside the rulers, make sure nothing gets tangled. Adjust the ends like so to keep the fiber as straight as possible. Once that's done, you can take a look at the close-up photos here and confirm the fiber truly is 1.08 meters long. Here, we have a polarization maintaining patch cord with an FC-PC connector on one end and an FC-APC connector on the other end. Let's plug this in. You'll notice that the end with the green boot is on the left port and the end with the black boot is on the right port. We'll tighten up the nuts and push the run button. The measured length is 1,054 millimeters. Let's switch the ends to demonstrate the repeatability. You'll notice that the end with the green boot will be on the right, and the end with the black boot will be on the left. Tighten up the nuts, and push the run button again. The measured length is 1,055 millimeters. The one millimeter difference is within measurement error. The fiber length meter comes with a built-in feature that allows for relative measurement between two different fibers. I have the two patch cords from earlier, and we'll plug the yellow one in and, and make a measurement. In the center of the screen, there is a right arrow. When we push it, the fiber length meter stores the current measurement as the base length. Now, let's unplug the yellow one and plug the black patch cord in. When we push the run button, we can see that this patch cord is 25 millimeters shorter than the first. The fiber length meter is a very robust measurement system. Here, again, I have the two different patch cords from earlier, and I've connected them together using a sleeve-through adapter. Let's plug this in. Again, one end on the receive port and one end on the send port. Let's tighten up the connections and push the run button. Now, if you don't like measurements in millimeters, you can push the millimeter unit button and we can convert the length measurements from millimeters for meters for ease of use. If you push it again, we switch back to millimeters. Now that you've seen the key functionality of the fiber length meter, we'll demonstrate the various fibers and lengths that it can measure. This orange patch cord is a graded index multi-mode fiber with APC connectors on both ends. Plugging this one in and tightening up the connections, And then pushing the run button, you'll see that this patch cord is 20,000 millimeters long, or 20 meters if you prefer.
This yellow one is a long spool of single mode telecom fiber. We'll plug one end in and then the other end in. Then push the run button and you'll see the measurement patch cord is 80 meters long. This one's unjacketed, a lot of unjacketed fiber. I bet you're an expert by now. Let's plug one end in and then the other end in. Let's push the run button. And this reel is 300 meters long. The measurements so far have been completed as a single shot measurement, which is the default mode of the meter. Now we'll demonstrate the continuous measurement mode. Here we have a polarization maintaining patch cord, which we'll plug in. The center button shows that this is on single shot mode. When we push the run button, a single measurement will display. We'll push the center button to enter continuous mode and push the run button to start. Leaving the fiber alone, the measurement is pretty static, but now, when we flex and move the fiber, there is some variation. You can also change the update speed to suit your needs. Suppose you have a length meter with FC receptacles on both ends, like this one here, and you have a patch cord with different connectorization, like these ones here with LC. You can easily convert to the correct mating connector by using a hybrid patch cord. In this case, one end with an FC connector and the other end with an LC connector. We'll have to take a reference length to measurement to zero out the extra fiber that we've added. We'll connect the two LC ends together and push the run button. We'll save this measurement as our base length and we'll unplug the two. We'll put a mating sleeve here and plug in the patch cord that we wish to measure. We push the run button and we can see that this patch cord is 534 millimeters long. We're going into more advanced techniques now. This section will convert a two port length meter into a single port length meter. To do this, we have a 50-50 splitter. You take both ports of one end of the splitter and plug them in. And then the output of the our port is now both a send and receive port. The light travels from the send port through the splitter and out this port. Any light entering the port goes through the splitter and is diverted to the receive port. Now, in order to get a meaningful measurement with this, you will need to calibrate out the extra fiber length from the splitter. We'll need to measure the length of the send path, like so. Remember this number. And now we're going to measure the length of the return path. Like so. Add these two lengths together to get the total length of the fiber added due to the splitter. Now return both ports back into the fiber length meter. Now, we can manually type in the base length of about 4.5 meters. Okay. And add a mating sleeve to the end. And now, you have a calibrated one port fiber length meter. Over here, I have a retro reflector with an FC connector on one end and a mirror on the other end. We can use this to demonstrate the operation of the one port length meter. Let's plug this in and tighten up the connections.
when we push the run button, the measurement shown is actually twice the fiber length added. The light has traveled through this fiber once to the mirror and bent backwards to the same fiber. So far, we have avoided the leftmost button, the laser on-off button. This should only be used for troubleshooting purposes to see if there are any breaks in your fiber. It is not needed for measurements. When we push the laser on-off button, a continuous beam of red light is emitted and the laser warning symbol appears on the screen. When we push the button again, the beam and symbol turn off. For high precision measurements, the index of refraction of the fiber core needs to be taken into account. To change the index of refraction, push on the index of refraction and the list of the most common ones are shown. You may choose one from the list or use your own custom value. Let's choose this one for now. You can see that the index of refraction has been changed. To use another preset value, tap on the index of refraction again and you can choose a different value. You can also manually enter a specific index of refraction. To enter a custom value, push the rightmost configuration button. On the right side, push the topmost page change button. Tap on the index of refraction and you can type in a specific value. Push OK and save. Push the exit button to return back to the home screen. To change back to a standard value, just tap on the index of refraction and select the one. There are always things that can go wrong, and the fiber length meter will let you know via error codes. By far, the most common is that there's not enough light, or there's no light entering the receive port. I've intentionally left this patch cord unplugged, and when I push the run button, the error code E234 comes up. To fix this, you make sure both ends are plugged in. And when you push the run button, the error code clears.